if you are a SharePoint developer, and especially if you are developing sandbox solutions, especially no-code sandbox these days, it happens quite often that you need to redeploy a solution, and it happens quite often that you want to delete and recreate a site collection from scratch based on a certain template. So in this video, I want to show you how you can do it using PowerShell. Definitely, if you look online, you will find lots of scripts that they will do the job for you, but there are a couple of tricks that I'd rather cover in this video. Let's get into it. I start by going to SharePoint Central Administration and see how we can create a SharePoint site collection using the UI, and then we will pick up the same parameters, pass it to our PowerShell script, and we create a site using the PowerShell script. That's how we do it. I go to Application Management and create site collections. Make sure you have the right web application. I just give it a name and I call it demo01. And I call the URL demo01. Scroll down. I pick team site. I pick a site collection admin. And that's it. So let's review. I need a title for the website, I need the URL for the website, I need the site template, and I also need a username. Now let's get back to our PowerShell script and put all these parameters there. Let's recap. We put the site name, site URL, site owner, and template in this script. So we have the new site with the site URL, owner alias is the site owner, template is the site template that we picked, and the site name, which is going to be the title of the website. I use the PowerShell. It's much easier and cleaner. Run as administrator. Start. I come here. And I create a new file. And we start writing. Here are the parameters. First parameter is a site name. Or if I go to the script, that's a title. So I come here and I call it site name is going to be demo02 and I use it for the script. Then the second parameter is the site URL. So I say site URL equals http colon slash slash and it's sp2013 dev slash sites slash demo02. So sp2013 dev slash sites slash demo02. First tricky point. If you just put one extra forward slash here, it will fail. Third parameter is the site owner. I say site owner and this is going to be my name, sp2013 dev backslash alireza. And finally, the site template. To get the list of all the templates available to a SharePoint site, we are using get sp web template. And after that, we can pass the parameter with the name or technically a unique ID for the template to get the reference to the template that we want to use. Site template that we use here is actually team site. I can pick any one of them. But here, I cannot simply put team site. There is an internal identity for every single one of these templates that I need to get it from SharePoint. To get these things from SharePoint, I do, first of all, I need to make a reference to the SharePoint PowerShell. So add ps snap in Microsoft dot SharePoint dot PowerShell. Okay. Then if I say get SP web template and I push enter, it gives me a list of all the site templates that are available here with their identity. So I'm looking for team site, I can scroll down and I can find the team site. Here is the team site. 
and here is the identity for the team site so just copy and here is my template that I say site template equals get SP web template and the template that I want to use of course if you want this to work in this line of code before that you have to call add ps snapping Microsoft dot SharePoint dot PowerShell do we need anything else no we actually got all the parameters so if I go here and I create this site this site collection to be exact and I can simply click on it and see the newly created website and the site is created so now we need to do the same thing using the PowerShell I get back to my PowerShell window and I start writing the code to create it command is very simple new SP site IntelliSense gives it to you I need to pass the site URL as the first parameter owner alias is going to be the site owner site owner the template we already got it site template and finally the name that we want to give it to the site is going to be our site name oh and before we, before we run it I just need to check the parameters as I told you before this forward slash will give us the error so I just save it I save it on the desktop and I call it create site collection dot ps1 and save now I can run it and see how the site is created it takes a while all right the site is created hopefully and let's open and see how it works let me just copy this path get back to the browser and new tab I just paste it here and let's see if it works yes we got the second site demo 02 created by PowerShell okay seems that we are done but not really let's compare the two websites and see how different the website that we created with PowerShell is from the website that we created using the UI so what is the problem they look the same but with a tiny little difference the one that is created using the UI demo 01 if I go to the setting and if I click on people and groups and I click on more the members owners visitors groups are created but if I go to the site that is creating using the PowerShell script to the same area people and groups and I click on more none of these default groups are created so that's what we are missing in this script I get back here and see what we need to do to fix this so as we saw the user groups are missing to take care of this we are using create default associated groups function this function accepts three parameters one is going to be the user login name user login name 2 and the group name seat user login name is a site collection owner user login 2 is going to be the secondary site collection owner and finally the group seat name is the seed that this function is going to use to create groups let me show you if I go to the website that is created by the UI you can see the members starts with demo 01 members owners starts with demo 01 owners and visitors starts with demo 01 visitors which means there is a seed that has been used for every single one of these groups and by default SharePoint uses a site name or the title of this root site if we don't provide this root script will do the same thing if we provide it we can change this seed so let's get back to the PowerShell script the first thing that we need to do we need to get a reference to the web 
So web equals get SP web and we need to pass the site URL. Then we need to use the ensure user to get a reference to the site owner user. So I say web dot ensure user site owner. Once this is done, I can use web dot create default associated oops. The first parameter is going to be site owner. Second parameter, I don't provide anything. I use the same site owner for that. And the third parameter that was supposed to be the seed, again, I don't provide anything. So just like the UI, it will pick up the site name for the seed for these groups. And because the site already exists, we need to delete and recreate the site. Otherwise, this line of script will fail. So let's delete the website before anything else. So I say remove SP site, site URL. And of course, I don't want the script prompt me for the confirmation. I would say false for the confirmation. Let's save it again and let's recreate the site. This time it should delete this demo 02 recreate it and it should recreate it with all these groups let's get back to the script save and i run it i think it's done let's get back to the site itself if i refresh it i see still the site is there but this is a new instance of the same website and i go to the site setting this time if i go to people and groups and I go to more, I can see all the default groups are created. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you like it, push the like button. And also don't forget to push the subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber. Have a wonderful day and happy coding.